Sticking within the political landscape, I do want to bring in tonight's panel showcasing diverse perspectives, radio host Tony Katz and Democratic strategist Crystal Knight uh, to dive a little deeper into this Trump versus Biden narrative and its political uh, potential impact on the midterms. Thank you both for being here. And I do want to launch right in. You know, we are seeing Trump on the campaign trail last night, his first appearance since the Mar-a-Lago raid. And just days after Biden gave his primetime speech and Trump calling Biden's speech vicious, hateful and divisive. Biden, meanwhile, says that MAGA ideology is semi-fascism. So who is winning the messaging war? Tony, we'll start with you. It's not about who's winning, it's about who's losing, because this isn't actually a war that Americans care about. If you go to Midwest Main Street, they're worried about energy prices, that their electricity bill is going up, that their water bill is going up, that this winter there may be serious conversations between whether we eat or whether we heat the house. Food prices are up 13.1% year over year. You think people are are, are concerned? Do, we, do, do Americans really think uh, that, that Americans are concerned about Trump versus Biden? Biden speech was unbelievable in its in its madness in its anger in the presentation alone he can't avoid the dictator type comparisons that have been coming and will continue to come anytime he runs or anytime the progressive left runs americans are much more worried about the things that are impacting them impacting their kids like education this war of words is media isn't real life crystal let's get your take on that well, I think it's interesting that Tony, you know, referred to President Biden as a dictator when we saw four years of Trump really just rummaging through the guardrails of democracy in this country. And you talk about the, you know, rhetoric that you, the per se rhetoric that you say President Biden spoke about, but democracy is in crisis right now. There are still election deniers on the Republican side of the aisle who don't believe that President Biden is the rightful president. There are, there are plenty of people on the Republican side of the aisle who are attempting to install secretaries of state all across this country, trying to influence Republican-led legislative bodies so that when elections come around in November and in 2024, that state legislatures get the opportunity to decide the outcome of elections. And so when we talk about what the president spoke about on Thursday in Philadelphia, he's absolutely right in bringing forth that this, this, this notion that, you know, if the election doesn't go your way, it's not right. That is a threat to democracy. That's something that's serious. It has to be addressed. And I'm glad that the president brought it up. Let's hold on just one second if we can. I said he looked dictatorial. I didn't say he was a dictator. But if I was going to talk about him being dictatorial, extending eviction moratoriums when the Supreme Court said you can't do that, paying off people's student debt and putting it on people who chose not to go to college or do other things, the very idea that Joe Biden is, is somehow an arbiter of democracy and never bringing up the fact that we're a republic, that's a laughable, laughable notion. The, this is not where Americans are at. They're at inflation. They're at gas prices, which are still Absolutely. way too high. And that's this is where Americans loan, are at. That's something that student loan relief is doing. Did you call it, you know, did you have a problem when we bailed out banks, when we bailed out car yes, industries? Yes, I had a massive problem when we bailed things? out banks. Well, run the I had a massive back, problem when we bailed out it. banks. Run the but if back, we're, but I want to see where you call those those industries out. We're, we're penalizing people for doing, quote unquote, the right thing. People go and say, go and get a college education. It's a part of the American dream. And then they're burdened by debt. And so we're saying they that took now the debt. Can't, right. Where's the personal but, responsibility but, in that? Paying off their debt when other people made real responsible decisions by not taking the debt. Has continued to bail out. Why can't? We, why is it an issue when we're bailing out students? Why is it an issue if when we're, ba we're bailing your out? Your conversation. Uh, if it's about bailouts, we could very well agree on that. But paying off people's student loans when, by telling other Americans who may not have gone to college or may have chosen another way that they have to do it is wrong. It is morally well, one, one wrong. Never mind me. the fact that I don't think the president has this authority. So, I, Tony, yes, I want to circle said. back uh, because we could talk about this for for, a, for the rest of the show. But I do want to circle back to your point about what do voters actually care about? Because in the speech last night, you know, Trump he called out Biden. He called called out Hillary and her email server. He talked about Adam Schiff and Russia. A lot of things that are not new talking points for him. You know, do voters really care about Hillary's emails or his repeated false allegations of election fraud at this point, Tony? 
I would think the only thing that they care about in this conversation is the idea of whether or not justice is applied across the board. Jonathan Turley, the law professor, made an interesting point. You're going to go after uh, uh, Donald Trump, but this could open the door for things regarding Hillary Clinton and her email server. It's, it's Jonathan Turley's point. I think it, it, it's a worthy one. Do I think Americans care about it in general? Certainly not as much as they care about the things that I mentioned. Their life, their kitchen table, their kids. This is where the focus has to be. And anybody who takes their eye off that, I'm speaking directly to the Republican Party, anybody who takes their eye off that is out of their damn mind and is saying, hey, we don't want to win this midterm. I mean, Tony, what is the concern over the division within the Republican Party? I mean, we have seen Trump uh, go back and forth, barbs towards McConnell, uh, calling for his removal, calling his wife crazy. This sort of name calling is something we got very used to over the course of, of four years. Uh, are you seeing the Republican Party sort of starting to fracture and fray at the seams uh, and, and the red wave that was promised maybe not coming to fruition as easily as they had hoped? So so the interesting argument being made by that, Natasha, is the idea that if Trump says that the Republican Party believes it, I don't necessarily believe that uh, to be true. Is Trump this giant figure? Of course, he, he's a giant figure. But I, you asked me where do I think Midwest Main Street is, and I'm laying out for you where they are. I speak to these people every day on WIBC right here in Indianapolis, and they are worried about the things that affect them. I don't actually see it as a fracturing of the Republican Party. I, I think that's much more media talking point uh, than a real conversation. It is about staying focused on the things that matter. Policy conversations matter. The border matters. There's a series of policy things. They have to stay focused on those. And I think that's where Midwest Main Street is focused. I, I hear you. Crystal, I want to bring you in one more time. What do you think President Biden really needs to be focusing on? Is it just a distraction to engage with, with MAGA and with Trump uh, calling him names, saying he's in cognitive decline? Hmm. Well, listen, I mean, that's that's part of the, the, the rhetoric that most presidents will likely do leading up into a midterm election. I do think it's important that he does call out the, you know, election, the, the challenges that surround elections, particularly around secretaries of state. I brought that up earlier. But, you know, to Tony's point, I do think people care about um, tabletop issues like economics. You know, inflation is still really high in this country. Um, the cost of groceries are still high. Gas prices have fallen. But ultimately, people vote with their pocketbooks. People vote with what they can see and feel affected in their day-to-day -day lives. And so, yes, a powerful speech calling out, you know, former President Trump and the MAGA, you know, extreme part of the Republican Party, it might be helpful to some, particularly here in the Beltway, but to folks that are in the Midwest or down South or even out West who are literally trying to think about where will their next meal come from, those aren't the issues people will be thinking about. But ultimately, I think what the president has to do is campaign on what he's accomplished. Campaign on those things and the folks in the states have to draw a line between what this administration has done in the last two years and how their candidacy will better their lives in the years to come. I wish we had more time. I even see Tony nodding just a little bit when it comes to those basic issues. A little bit. Those basic <laughs> issues that affect every American. Hey, I, these are divisive issues. Uh, we are more divided than ever in this country, but it's so important for us to be able to have a conversation. And Crystal Knight, Tony Katz, we appreciate your time as always. Thank you.